are some ongoing things, such as the MOOC. And so that last tab, that final tab, groups information, is where we can put things that are either ongoing or yearly or um, just events that we feel like that um, all of you guys would be interested in knowing what's going on and how to get information about them. So, and we welcome um, anyone to put um, their events on this calendar. And the way you do that, the directions are at the top. Just contact either Val or I, and we would love to get your events on this on this calendar. And then she has put a link here um, in C the CBL library to the Google Doc in case you forget where, where to find it. Um, so that's basically our Google Doc um, spreadsheet. Um, and the groups that right now we have um, advertised on there, and we certainly hope that you guys will, will um, this will be helpful for you, as well as please feel free to contact us, and we would love to get your information up here. Any questions or comments already at this point? So I'll turn it back over to you, Val. Great, great. You can see I've walked over to the other end of the library. We have a lot of different seating areas here. People can sit and study together in small groups, talk at the reference desk. But you can see Maggie entered and came over here to our expanding table. If anyone's looking for a place to sit, you're welcome to follow us over to this expanding table uh, that gets larger um, as more people join and are seated together. Um, I'd like to talk at this point a little bit about our purpose with the, the CBL Education Network. It's twofold. First of all, we wanted to do it to help individuals, people who want to learn themselves. Everyone's at a different um, learning level. We have new people that come in, and they're just overwhelmed by virtual environments. And then we have people who have been here a long time, but they still want to um, learn and go to other environments together like Ellie mentioned, the VR-capable environments. In VR, you can go into a virtual environment either with a VR headset or simply on your desktop. But it is very frustrating to go to these environments all by yourself when you don't know what is out there or what's available. But if you go with a group or a partner, you can explore, and it's much more productive, interesting, and can help help each other troubleshoot. So that's one thing we're doing with the, with this education network. We're helping people as individuals, but we also want to help people as groups. Par find different groups where you can find your niche. For example, we partner with the nonprofit commons, as I mentioned. We partner with the virtual pioneers and with um, ISTE, the International Society for Technology and Education. We partner with Caledon, which is a role play library that's been evolved pretty much since the beginning of Second Life. And with all of these different educational groups, we, um, we kind of highlight that here this month at the Virtual World MOOC. For example, if you look at the sessions coming up on the MOOC, you'll see that um, tomorrow evening we have a collaboration with CVL and Caledon. Every second Friday of the month, we do a literary study, usually a read aloud, which is a lot of fun. No pressure. People don't have to read aloud. They can simply sit and enjoy. We sometimes meet at Caledon and alternate the next month over here at CVL around the campfire. So we put that on the MOOC so people could experience what it's like to do a read aloud virtually across virtual communities. And then on Friday, a fascinating virtual event that goes across um, not only communities, but across the globe. Some of you may know Yan Loria, who's in Japan. Friday morning, 7 o'clock Pacific time at the MOOC, we're going to be doing Yan Loria's amazing gateway to thinking, where he has collected landmarks of fantastic virtual simulations across Second Life. And every month, we follow on a tour. So you, you, you won't want to miss it. It's just a, a fabulous collection that is housed right here on, on Cookie Island at the Community Virtual Library. 
as Saturday night, we're just showing what it's like to have a virtual world book discussion, just as you would in a physical library, sitting around a campfire, talking about books. And then I already mentioned on Sunday, we're at the music library, we're having our blues live music event, which brings in, the goal there is to bring in all of the high quality musicians in Second Life and have them, uh, give them a place to share their work in a catalog of music. Um, and this just started this year, so it's, it's still growing. So these are some examples of not just helping individuals, but also helping groups by, um, cross-community events and highlighting what virtual world groups are doing. CDL is also, CDL is starting, also starting podcasting. podcasting. Hearing a little echo there, so I'm going to go off Zoom for a minute. On, in our podcasting, we're inviting people to come in and talk about their work in virtual worlds. And we can put that on our podcasting channel, which I'll put in the text chat here in, um, in Second Life so you can look at it. And so as part of the MOOC, we thought, now what's a topic that everyone might be interested in that's also a library topic that we could share at the MOOC? We're going to talk about Banned Books Week. In case you're not familiar with it, the American Library Association has a special event yearly in the fall called Banned Books Week to celebrate intellectual freedom and our right to read, you know, and right to privacy. And we'll talk about different books that have been challenged, and you'll be surprised, some of the classics that are often challenged in schools and academic libraries. And so we're going to talk about that at our podcasting event. And here's the channel for CVL um, podcasting. So I wanted to bring up these different events to show that they're featuring various virtual world communities and what and what they're doing. And it's difficult to go to everything. Of course, we know we can't attend all of these events, and we can't explore all of these different virtual environments. But together, we can be aware of them. And we can explore them when we do have time. And we know where to go and pop in to talk about it because we can use the CVL Education Network. And your group or your, your office hours can be on this spreadsheet. Now, the goal of this spreadsheet is not to place all of the events that are going on, because as I said, it get, would be way too cluttered. You can't go to everything. It's hard enough to keep up with just my uh, incoming notices in Second Life, because when you're involved in a lot of groups, each group has a lot of great cool things going on and you're not always able to attend. But through office hours, when you find your niche, say you're a science teacher and you really want to know what is available in virtual worlds for science. Well, through this network and through looking at various groups and talking with various individuals, you can find out you know, what's been done and is ongoing on that topic of science. Or say you're interested in genealogy. You know, the library can put you in, in touch with genealogy groups, genealogists, so that you, know, you can um, focus on your niche, but also explore the other great things that are going on in virtual worlds. So, so I've shared a little bit about learning as an individual or networking with a group. Both are the purpose and the goal of the CVL Education Network. And I've shared a few of the things that are going on this week that uh, demonstrate that across, um, across uh, the Second Life. I mentioned in the introduction that Second Life is our home base. The Community Virtual Library has been in Second Life since about 2006 or seven, um, it had started. I was early on an early adopter of virtual worlds for libraries. And when I came in world, um, at first I didn't have a graphics card that was capable. So I had to wait until I got a, a better computer. And when I came in world, there were many, many librarians here. It began with the Alliance Library System of Illinois. And then it expanded uh, to uh, a lot of librarians around the globe. But then after, um, in around 2009, there were some changes with Linden Labs in their um, discounts for education. And that really shuffled a lot of educators that some were leaving Second Life. A lot of changes were taking place. And the community virtual library changed from Alliance Library System Alliance Community Library to the Community Virtual Library. And we have been around ever since. 
Um, I'm going to show you here uh, just real quick. Worlds and libraries, you'll see about it. I'll put that link in here. If you're interested more in the, <clears throat> the history of this library, there's an article on, on Wikipedia that it tells a bit about virtual world libraries. So we have a, a long history here in Second Life, and there are other libraries in Second Life that we um, we love to network with and share what, what they are, are doing. Uh, but this is our home base, Second Life. But realizing that Second Life is a proprietary company, we also want to explore as virtual, land, um, virtual environments emerge and they evolve, we want to explore other places as well. So when Ellie mentioned that we have on the spreadsheet, all of those pages down at the bottom, the different various sheets, you'll notice that we also are in web-based worlds. We have found some teachers now, due to the pandemic, with everything going online, some teachers are utilizing Chromebooks because they are um, less expensive than higher-end you know, computers. Uh, Chromebooks, you can't access all of the virtual environments on a Chromebook, but you can access some of the web-based virtual worlds. So we have, in CVL, we, um, we often go into Cyber Lounge. We have a wonderful space in 3D web worlds, and those spaces are easy for newcomers to come in just on the web. So that's why CVL is exploring those spaces. We have our great projects I mentioned in Kitely. We want to have a branch there, not just in Second Life. So wherever you are and wherever you hold your office hours, we welcome you to, uh, you know, to join us and put your office hours on the spreadsheet, just to give it a, cent a central place so that we can find each other. So that's a bit about um, networking, uh, networking with educational groups and as an individual here in Second Life and beyond. And Ellie's going to tell us a little bit about uh, the research that we're doing with these various groups that I'm talking about. So Ellie, I'll give it back to you. Thank you, Val. <clears throat> so um, one of the other reasons that I got, uh, I was able to find all these lovely people was because that my institution had asked me to add uh, virtual reality to our class. Um, and so I was looking around to see, well, what is happening in virtual reality and what are the different venues. And, um, and, and I bumped into this lovely group of researchers um, that uh, worked with CBL um, and um, Bacara and San, and San Jose State University. Bacara stands for Virtual Archives and Records Administration. And so we have a little group that they let me um, hook, hook up with, and uh, they would love for you to too if you have an interest. And what has what is happening is that <clears throat> Bacara it has developed a. Um, a survey as well, and we are going to the different um, virtual reality spaces and assessing them, looking to see what's going on with education and uh, business uses. And um, so there are, I was amazed at how many there are. And it is a little hard to do it on your own because just, I mean, you can. I'm not saying that you can't, but it's certainly a lot easier whenever you have a group that has some understanding of it. And several of the folks in the group have a lot of um, experience, not only with research, but also with um, educational technologies and looking into um, different technologies as they immerse. And so we've, we've gone to um, Science Space and Sonium Space and um, Mozilla Hubs, I believe, and Verbella. And uh, we go once a month, and we would be very happy to uh, um, for you to join us. Uh, several of the things we're looking for is the ease of use, and if, as Val said, do you have to have a headset, or can you go just on your PC, um, on your on your computer, your desktop? Um, and so we have 
added that on the group's information. And we, um, it is a third Friday at uh, five o'clock SLT of each month to visit VR World. So uh, we don't put, um, right now we aren't putting exactly which world and all that information on there. We could do that if that's helpful for folks. Um, but because SL is where most of us started, um, we do want to reach out, and I, we watched that with the MOOC and um, all the folks that we're working with in the MOOC, um, that there are lots of opportunities out there. And we certainly want to see, um, are they, you know, what are they, what do they, what do they include, and help some of our educational folks um, with getting started with this, because I'm sure most of you are like me. Um, you start with not knowing anything, <laughs> and then, um, and it's helpful to have folks who have some experience. Dang, we're inviting people to come in and talk about their work in virtual worlds, and we can put that on our podcasting channel, which I'll put in the text chat here in, um, in Second Life, so you can look at it. And so, as part of the MOOC, we thought, now what's a topic that everyone might be interested in that's also a library topic that we could share at the MOOC? We're going to talk about banned books week. In case you're not familiar with it, the American Library Association has a special event yearly in the fall called Banned Books Week to celebrate intellectual freedom and our right to read, you know, and right to privacy. And we'll talk about different books that have been challenged and you'll be surprised some of the classics that are often challenged in schools and academic libraries. And so we're going to talk about that at our podcasting event. And here's the channel for CVL um, podcasting. So I wanted to bring up these different events to show that they're featuring various virtual world communities and what and what they're doing. And it's difficult to go to everything. Of course, we know we can't attend all of these events. And we can't explore all of these different virtual environments. But together, we can be aware of them. And we can explore them when we do have time. And we know where to go and pop in to talk about it because we can use the CVL Education Network. And your group or your, your office hours can be on this spreadsheet. Now, the goal of this spreadsheet is not to place all of the events that are going on, because as I said, it get, would be way too cluttered. You can't go to everything. It's hard enough to keep up with just my uh, incoming notices in Second Life, because when you're involved in a lot of groups, each group has a lot of great cool things going on and you're not always able to attend. But through office hours, when you find your niche, say you're a science teacher and you really want to know what is available in virtual worlds for science. Well, through this network and through looking at various groups and talking with various individuals, you can find out you know, what's been done and is ongoing on that topic of science. Or say you're interested in genealogy. You know, the library can put you in, in touch with genealogy groups, genealogists, so that you, know, you can um, focus on your niche, but also explore the other great things that are going on in virtual worlds. So, so I've shared a little bit about learning as an individual or networking with a group. Both are the purpose and the goal of the CVL Education Network. And I've shared a few of the things that are going on this week that uh, demonstrate that across, um, across uh, the Second Life. I mentioned in the introduction that Second Life is our home base. The Community Virtual Library has been in Second Life since about 2006 or 7. Um, it had started, I was early on an early adopter of Virtual Worlds for Libraries. And when I came in World, um, at first I didn't have a graphics card that was capable. So I had to wait until I got a, a better computer. And when I came in World, there were many, many librarians here. It began with the Alliance Library System of Illinois. And then it expanded um, to uh, a lot of librarians around the globe. But then after, um, in around 2009, there were some changes with Linden Labs in their um, discounts for education. And that really shuffled a lot of educators that some were leaving Second Life. A lot of changes were taking place. And the community virtual library changed from Alliance Library System Alliance Community Library to the Community Virtual Library. And we have been around 
ever since. Um, I'm going to show you here uh, just real quick. Worlds and libraries, you'll see about it. I'll put that link in here. If you're interested more in the, <clears throat> the history of this library, there's an article on, on Wikipedia that tells a bit about virtual world libraries. So we have a, a long history here in Second Life, and there are other libraries in Second Life that we um, we love to network with and share what, what they are, are doing. Uh, but this is our home base, Second Life. But realizing that Second Life is a proprietary company, we also want to explore as virtual, land, um, virtual environments emerge and they evolve, we want to explore other places as well. So when Ellie mentioned that we have on the spreadsheet, all of those pages down at the bottom, the different sh various sheets, you'll notice that we also are in web-based worlds. We have found some teachers now, due to the pandemic, with everything going online, some teachers are utilizing Chromebooks because they are um, less expensive than higher end you know, computers. Uh, Chromebooks, you can't access all of the virtual environments on a Chromebook, but you can access some of the web-based virtual worlds. So we have, in CVL, we, um, we often go into Cyber Lounge. We have a wonderful space in 3D web worlds, and those spaces are easy for newcomers to come in just on the web. So that's why CVL is exploring those spaces. We have our great projects I mentioned in Kitely. We want to have a branch there, not just in Second Life. So wherever you are and wherever you hold your office hours, we welcome you to, uh, you know, to join us and put your office hours on the spreadsheet, just to give it a, cent a central place so that we can find each other. So that's a bit about um, networking, uh, networking with educational groups and as an individual here in Second Life and beyond. And Ellie's going to tell us a little bit about uh, the research that we're doing with these various groups that I'm talking about. So Ellie, I'll give it back to you. Thank you, Val. <clears throat> so um, one of the other reasons that I got, uh, I was able to find all these lovely people was because that my institution had asked me to add uh, virtual reality to our class. Um, and so I was looking around to see, well, what is happening in virtual reality and what are the different venues. And, um, and, and I bumped into this lovely group of researchers um, that uh, work with CVL um, and, um, Vicara and San, and San Jose State University. Vicara stands for Virtual Archives and Records Administration. And so we have a little group that they let me um, hook, hook up with, and uh, they would love for you to, too, if you have an interest. And what has what is happening is that <clears throat> Vicara it has developed a... Um, a survey as well, and we are going to the different um, virtual reality spaces and assessing them, looking to see what's going on with education and uh, business uses. And um, so there are, I was amazed at how many there are. And it is a little hard to do it on your own because just, I mean, you can. I'm not saying that you can't, but it's certainly a lot easier whenever you have a group that has some understanding of it. And several of the folks in the group have a lot of um, experience, not only with research, but also with um, educational technologies and looking into um, different technologies as they immerse. And so we've, we've gone to um, Science Space and Sonium Space and um, Mozilla Hubs, I believe, and Verbella. And uh, we go once a month, and we would be very happy to uh, um, for you to join us. Uh, several of the things we're looking for is the ease of use, and if, as Val said, do you have to have a headset, or can you go just on your PC, um, on your on your computer, your desktop? Um, and so we have 
added that on the group's information and we uh, it is a third Friday at uh, five o'clock SLT of each month to visit VR World. So uh, we don't put um, right now we aren't putting exactly which world and all that information on there. We could do that if that's helpful for folks. Um, but because SL is where most of us started, um, we do want to reach out, and I we watched that with the MOOC and um, all the folks that we're working with in the MOOC, um, that there are lots of opportunities out there. And we certainly want to see, um, are they, you know, what are they, what do they, what do they include and help some of our educational folks um, with getting started with this because I'm sure most of you are like me um, you start with not knowing anything <laughs> and then um, and it's helpful to have folks who have some experience with it so that is our VR research group and um, we would just love to have you join us with that if that is an interest of yours um, one of my, the other piece that we just wanted to briefly talk about is online professional development. And certainly that has become something that is extremely um, um, needed right now with all of the challenges we have with COVID. Um, and that is my background, my research is in that area. And what I was um, pleased to find, lucky to find, um, as I was doing my research is that my um, study group actually had more, um, they learned more in their professional development experience and they uh, were able to use, utilize their learning um, more deeply by being able to do it online um, and because they could, it's the same thing that any, that uh, um, most of us talk about with online being uh, convenient so I was working with k-12 teachers and they had little kids and they were needing to do their professional development not you know once a month for 30 minutes in a staff meeting but oftentimes in the middle of the night um, whenever they had tucked their kids in bed and so um, as we're looking at all of the educational opportunities in all of these wonderful worlds uh, we certainly want to want to include online professional development because um, it is certainly a avenue that is needed and um, and having it available and um, and knowing that that its utilization is uh, research based and um, and even even better online in, in many ways uh, so, so as we are looking at all these worlds and doing our research, we want to keep in mind that professional development can certainly be one of those um, really great places that can take advantage of all these uh, all of these fantastic worlds that we have to to utilize. Um, so, I'm I'm wondering. Um, I want to reiterate what Val said. This can be overwhelming. Um, as you're looking at all the opportunities here, and that is not what we're trying to promote. We're not trying to say you have to do everything that um, is on here, and if you aren't, um, you're not doing enough. We're we're actually trying to do the opposite, which is get the word out there of all that's going on. And if this is something that helps you, then th you can connect with the folks that are doing it um, and doing it well. So hopefully that's a help. And how are you guys, um, how are you finding out what's going on? And I'm so sorry I'm not in Zoom because of the echo, so if someone could share if there is some chat going on in Zoom in here. So um, how do you find out what's going on in, in, in our uh, professional worlds and how do you get there? That's such a great question, Ellie, and if people could um, type that in the text chat here, we can have a conversation about it because I know for me, keeping up with the number of incoming notifications on what's going on is really difficult. And then we've also talked about 
outside of Second Life, do you get notifications on Facebook or Twitter? It used to be Google+, Plus, but then that went under. Do you have get them on Discord? Do you, I mean, there's so many channels coming at us, or by email. Um, and so it, it's, it's difficult to um, always keep up. And don't you hate it when you find out about a great event, but you found out too late and you missed it because you didn't, you know, didn't get the notification. And I miss a lot, I have to say. I often have that happen. And I don't think the spreadsheet, it's its not to help you, uh, it's not going to put notifications of events, but when you're able to partner with other people, it leads to being able to find your niche, and that helps those things come to you that are most relevant to you. Um, and, and also, we can do more cross-community networking rather than our, isolate in our own little, you know, own little wor uh, community worlds, which are smaller. And, uh, and that helps people understand the great things that are going on. And that's what CVL wants to do, is promote the great work that educators, artists, subject specialists, and, and others are, are doing in virtual environments, and promote that work you know, for them so people are aware. So we see some um, comments and great information coming up in, in text chat, and we want to, um, we're going to look that over, so when we close, we'll have a chance for to talk about questions and some of the concerns of, of what we're talking about, and also maybe helpful suggestions for the future. But as Ellie was talking right there, uh, the, the main point that we want is, of course, not to overwhelm you, but help you find your own niche in virtual worlds, because I've found rather than twisting someone's arm and saying, oh, could you come over and help with this, or can you come to this event, it's better for people to do what they love and share it, and it leads to great collaboration naturally, because it's what they want to do anyway. So um, that's kind of the goal of the spreadsheet, too, is to help people connect to others with shared interests and also help connect with others who have talents that we don't have. For example, I'm not a great builder, but I've found builders who have helped make this a great space at CVL. I'm not a great scripter, but um, a wonderful scripter just came in and helped us with our bell over at the reference desk. I'm going to walk down there again so you can, if you follow me to the reference desk, I want to point out that our head of reference, Sue Noon Magic here today, does a fabulous job training volunteers, anyone who wants to volunteer and help CVL. All you have to do is hang out here for your office hours for an hour. What a wonderful place to just be when you're working on your computer, but also help others so that we can connect. You'll see the sign behind the reference desk, ring bell for service. A scripter just this week helped fix this bell so that it will ring any librarians that are in Second Life anywhere in case uh, they're not here at the desk pop over and help a new person um, answer their questions, connect with others. And it's not about helping them learn how to make their avatar walk. We can send them to a great you know, orientation space for that. It's more about helping them connect with communities and resources that, that are their niche. Because in virtual worlds, it's really finding your niche. It's not learning how to walk and, you know, people say, I don't know how to get dressed. Well, we can, we can help you find an orientation space for that, but it's, it's actually more than that. It's finding your niche. And you'll see on page two of the website, I mean, the web, the CVL Education Network spreadsheet, is Selby Evans, who's It's so easy to pop into Cyber Lounge and you can talk about virtual worlds. You can learn about web-based worlds there, but you can also talk about any virtual environment and just have a chat and get, I've learned so much that way. I've learned um, from collaborating with Selby in his office hours about filming with OBS and finding free software that can help me learn. Um, he shared with me Shotcut. 
And now I've used it to, to change my formatting, like say I'm making a podcast and I want to separate the audio. I'm, you know, some of you may be much uh, more technology geeks than I am, but I easily learned how to change my video into just an MP3 using open source software. Well, if these worlds during off. Um, by the way, um, over here you'll see on this side above me, uh, we put the spreadsheet on a media on a prim sign. So if you forget that link, you can just come over here, click on the sign, and find the CVL Education Network spreadsheet up here. But those are some ways to, some of the reasons to go to people's office hours are to, if you have a problem, kind of talk it through. I'm, I'm wanting to learn this. I'm not sure how to start. And then you can either be put in touch with someone who's an expert on that topic, or you can just kind of brainstorm open source, you know, software that might work for you. Um, or you can talk about things like various viewers that are out there. Even during this section, session, um, Maggie IM'd me because she said she found a viewer that might work for Chromebooks. And I'm like, really? i got to check that out. So if you look on, um, on page two right there but the web-based worlds, you'll see in the notes, check the cool VL viewer and, and maybe try that out. So we can help each other with different things like that. And there's a space on there to, to take notes that might be helpful to others as well. I'd like to mention too, I, I mentioned that we're learning how to use OBS as a free um, software for video capture. I was using Fraps for a number of years, but it took up so much room, those giant files that I wanted smaller so this is this um, this is the YouTube channel right there for um, that's a that's my YouTube channel with some virtual world library uh, playlist and some of these are from oh years ago it just kind of shows some of the um, we try to archive the journey that we've all had here you know in virtual worlds um, and machinima is a great way to do that if you want to learn Machinima, this education network would help with that as well because you can go into different people's office hours, talk about your skill level and you know where to go from here, how you want to learn. Here's the Community Virtual Library YouTube channel. Um, I had one myself for a number of years, but as librarians were wanting to have a channel where everyone, all the librarians can um, begin to upload and put them in a in a pool on one channel, the CVL uh, channel. So you'll see on that channel we're also putting our YouTube videos there as well. So if you have that spreadsheet open, you've, uh, you've seen that the first page of course is Second Life. It's our home base. We've been here for years and the Community Virtual Library will most likely be right here. And then on the second page I've shared a bit about Selby's office hours, the office hours that you can find others in 3D web worlds, and this will grow if there are other web-based virtual worlds, we can add them to this page. You notice on the third sheet, Kitely, I'm having office hours now every Saturday in Kitely because we have so many projects that are growing there and we want to keep the momentum going, growing in Kitely. You don't have to go to Kylie if you'd want to stay in Second Life. We totally get that. But there are some reasons that educators are going to Kitely. First, it's cost effective. It's a pay-as-you-go model. And um, it's free to upload you know, uh, presentations and content. So there are, there are reasons that Kitely is very cost effective for educators. And other virtual worlds like OpenSim, I mean, not, not OpenSim for the um, web, uh, open source worlds that look sort of like Second Life, Avicon, uh, DigiWorlds, worlds like that. We'd like to add people's office hours who utilize those worlds. And if you're interested in Kitely, at the MOOC, we have a really cool presentation coming up on the 20th at Sendalond Library. And what is interesting about this event that we're doing for the MOOC, Sendalond Library is this gorgeous sort of sci-fi fantasy steampunk library, so that's kind of fun. But it was built in a world called InWorlds. If any of you are familiar with InWorlds, there was this great library called Sendalond, but then InWorlds went under and it no longer exists. 
the librarians, Alex and Prax, who you'll meet if you come to Sandalond, they built this gorgeous world and then it just disappeared from in-worlds. It was sad. If you've been in virtual worlds a long time, you know that when content disappears, it's a loss that's just like losing a beautiful building in the physical world. It was demolished. But they rebuilt the entire library in Kitely. So this is an example of how archival is needed in the future. future. And hopefully they'll explain a little about how that process took place. Or files. You can save them in one, you know, on your computer and then upload in, them into another you know, virtual world. And I'm not an expert at that. I might not even have explained it well. But come to that session if you're interested in archives. We have an underwater archival display at the Digital Citizenship Museum in Kitely, because this is important for the future of virtual worlds, understanding digital legacy and digital archives, how these can be saved for future generations beyond simply taking machinima and you know putting it on YouTube. It's a very important concept. So we have that coming up on, uh, on the tw 20th. That's a Sunday at noon. Um, and so going to all of these spaces, as Ellie said, it's, it's really, we only can do it together. I've learned so much from so many helpful people like, like Selvi, like um, Sue Moon, who's helped me for years here at CVL, um, Marie Vans, who leads the VR Explorers for Vacara, and many of you who are right here. Um, I learned, you know, from, from Ellie, we, we, we put our heads together and came up with this idea of, yeah, Sue Moon, you're the sidekick. And I joked one time with a little uh, blog, blog post about Batman and Robin, you know, you've got to have a sidekick. And it really does take a lot of people working together to make virtual worlds the great um, opportunities they are for education and really for any kind of con content. I think that um, during this pandemic with so many people having to go online, I have started appreciating virtual worlds even more than I did before. Although I've, you know, I've spent over 10 years researching these environments, I've even had a renewed appreciation in the past six months. So that's kind of what um, we want to talk about is what's your niche and how can the Community Virtual Library help, help you network within that niche and find what you need to find in virtual worlds without them being overwhelming. And um, another reason they can be overwhelming is that the technology tools themselves are constantly upgrading. And I'm going to ask this in text chat so you can kind of respond there if you'd like. How many of you are still having tech glitches? Like you're right in the middle of a presentation, your sound won't work, all of a sudden the system crashes, or there's an upgrade and you have to reboot your computer, completely upgrade, you know, um, reload the system upgrade. Has that happened to any of you? I did a recent presentation for uh, Dartmouth University was having this session called Beyond Zoom. How to use virtual worlds beyond Zoom. And I had all kinds of technology trouble. But I started telling myself, you know, that's the nature of the game. I am not going to be frustrated by, by this. The gentleman simply said, we'll get back to you. I'm going to let the next person present and then we'll come back to you, Val. And I, inside I was thinking, this is kind of embarrassing. I've been doing this for years. But I thought, no, it's the nature of the game. I just let the next speaker, speaker do it. I came back 10 minutes later and tried again. And it's just going to keep happening. And so um, I think that's part of this network, too, is to help each other realize you're never going to master this. There's never going to be a day where everything works perfectly and we finally have arrived at the platform that we've all decided is the best one. That is not going to happen. But together, we can be calm about it. And we can say, can you help me with this? Because I don't know which platform to use. You know, And that's kind of why we're doing this. We're going to stay calm about it. We're going to help each other learn the platforms. We have a Discord channel. And, and sometimes when we're out exploring these virtual environments and they're not working, and you can't hear anybody, and your avatar is stuck, you know, we can get on voice on Discord and say, I'm having the same trouble. No problem. You know, let's just talk about it here. And uh, and so 
that's that's kind of the idea is to do it together so we don't get quite as frustrated yes Nellie things happen so um, I think we're going to open up here for questions and Ellie you want to talk a little bit I haven't looked at the chat about anything that's come to mind for you of anything we want to address and open up for questions well, I, uh, there was a question about the CBL book discussion on the 11th. Um, they have two different times, and I don't know if you you can do that as you have, have time and get back with um, Maggie and Nellie, but um, they, they have two different times uh, noted, so they needed to confirm the time for that. That's one of the things that came up in chat. And I love that you're saying technology is going to fail us. Um, I, I love the uh, comment. I'm looking back to see who made that uh, about well, if life isn't perfect. Oh, that was Nellie. Uh, why would technology be? And I do certainly feel like that that is a, a huge point to be made um, here. I, I also think that um, together we're better. Collaboration is um, so powerful, and I, I think that that was one of the points that were being made in um, in the chat and tools, which as a, a ed tech person, I kind of don't like tools. I feel like that tools can get a sidetracked, but being able to find um, the right tool that will work um, at the time and um, not just get tool happy is part of that collaboration of, of colleagues that can share those kinds of things so that the tools don't get in our way. So um, hopefully that is a help. Uh, Discord, we didn't talk too awfully much about Discord, but I think all of us are using it and it certainly um, saved us many times with voice. Um, and what a good point, Nelly. So, um, so when things go wrong, it, it is a chance to learn, and that is certainly what we when we learn the best, right? We tell our students that all the time. Please make mistakes. Don't feel like you can't make a mistake because that's when you're going to learn the most. Um, I'll put an invitation to the CVL Discord channel here in the text chat, um, and you know we want to make sure people know they can. They can offer friendship in any of these virtual environments and also on Discord. Um, we're at CVL, our philosophy is to be, be quite transparent and authentic online. Um, and so for years, I've, I use the same name in all of the virtual environments I go to. So you can find my name, Valibrary, and pretty much the same name everywhere. And because my goal is to be a virtual world librarian and help wherever I am so and I found a lot of people who do the same for whatever their niche is to be authentic as an educator an artist or whatever and so um, feel free to offer friendship in any environment so that we can um, <clears throat> help each other and I want to ask this I find it very helpful here in Second Life you know on the on the profile of people you can go into notes and you can take notes, like sometimes I'll say, this is a science educator, so that I can remember later what it is they might need, you know. And so uh, when I have a VR headset, you know, we, we talked a bit about exploring with VR headsets. I've, I have, uh, since I have a VR headset now, I do not like it. <laughs> and, but I am glad I have one so that I can know the difference and I can tell you that a virtual world like Second life is 10 times more productive, if not more, than a world with a headset where I feel like I am inside a little bubble, I can't be productive, my hands are tied behind my back, everyone looks the same, and I can't really network very well. Where here, you know, people can be their authentic self, you, you can identify people with, with their avatar, and you can right click and see what notes you've taken about them, which is something I really like to do as a librarian in order to help people. And I don't know about you, but I have often thought, wouldn't it be great in the physical world if you could right click on someone and you know, just take notes about all the things you want to remember about them? Because we have so many connections, it would be impossible to remember all of that. Um, so it's it's kind of interesting. It's a dig digital culture phenomenon to be able to use technology, but still keep our humanity 
Um, someone told me it's impossible to have more than a certain number of real friendships. I think there should maybe be a different term for friend in virtual environments because it's not the same as a friend that you, you know, you just unload your soul with, but it's it's a connection, a colleague. A, there should be new words for this, but there are it's it's important. There are so many tools here in Second Life to help build rich communities, and I think that's uh, you know that's something that we want to be able to do in these virtual environments. Um, Ellie, you see anything else in the chat that we need to address? No, we've had some really good comments. I just think that they're supporting um, supporting everything that we're saying, and um, we uh, we certainly want it, want the whole purpose of um, us asking for this time was to um, figure out how we can work together to help everyone know what's going on in virtual worlds and uh, make sure our communities, all of our communities' efforts are getting noticed. So hopefully this Hi, will give you an opportunity to um, to join us as well and then give us your, your great ideas. Um, thank you so much. And it does tell you on that CVL network spreadsheet how to reach us. You can, if you want to add your office hours, of course you can contact me or, or Ellie and we will put yours on there in any virtual world, any virtual environment that you choose to hold virtual office hours. And if you would like to uh, hold office hours right here in this wonderful space, um, contact Sue Moon Magic here. She's our head of reference. Um, just like any library, public, academic, library, in the physical world, we rely a lot on our volunteer friends of the library. You don't have to have a Master of Library Science. We train you and give you the tools that you need um, if you want to hold your office hours right here. It's, it's a, a lot of fun. Any other, as we're closing, any other suggestions that you'd like to see added to the spreadsheet or for the Community Virtual Library um, or anything else that you'd like to, uh, to bring up? And I really look forward to seeing a lot of you the rest of the month at the fabulous Virtual World MOOC. We're really thrilled to be a part of, of the MOOC and thank the organizers who do an amazing job. Yes, here, here. I, I completely want to want to say that as well. And um, we are very open <laughs> to your suggestions. So if you haven't, if you come up with something in the next day or two or a month, please just let uh, Val or I know. We would love to um, have your input as well. Thank you, everyone. All right, so thank you, thank you. And this um, has been taking place right during Ellie's office hours. Wednesday mornings, 9 o'clock, well, it could be wherever you are in the world, it might not be morning, but 9 a.m. Um, Pacific time. I sometimes pop in here. Ellie's right here sitting at the computer, and it's, it's just nice to know. Um, I had a woman who's a, a geology professor come in and talk to me about Second Life as a real place. Because if you've been here any length of time, you know it is. It's, it's a real place. And, and to have someone that you know is in this real place at a certain time is quite helpful to, to us all. Yes, so please come join me sometime. <laughs> All right, so this has been an amazing session. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us and see you tomorrow for our next session on VW MOOC. Thank you, Nan. If you want to say something, feel free to... Um, and we have a couple more minutes if anybody would like to type where they are in the physical world, just so we have a, an idea of uh, how diverse our, our Second Life audience here is. Great, we've got someone from Jamaica. Just feel free to type it in the text chat if should you like to. We've got Seattle, we've got New Mexico, we've got Poland, New Orleans. North Carolina.
it's, it's just amazing how global virtual worlds can be. And that I highly encourage you to come 7 a.m. to Jan Loria's presentation. Um, <clears throat> because Eng English is his second language and he's very fluent in Japanese, it can be a very interesting time. I try to transcribe as he is using voice because it's sometimes difficult to, you know, to understand um, since his English is not super fluent. But together, we always figure it out and go on an exploration of amazing spaces in Second Life. If you're looking for a really fun time, come and see Ian Loria's Gateway to Thinking. All right, so um, we're going to end the session and thank everybody for an amazing session. See you tomorrow. Bye, Nan. I don't know if you can hear me, but. It's hard to Getting say goodbye. In the Dickens Project should contact me later, too, because we're getting ready to really gear up for all month in December, the Dickens Project. And uh, if you contact me, there'd be a place for you. We're going to have a whole street of research on the Victorian era London, as well as the fun of the Dickens Project. Coming up real soon. <laughs>